We went to Edinburgh Pride with a placard. You can see what happened in just a minute. Let's just set the scene first, though. Edinburgh Pride. Well, all sorts of sexual perversion on display. Some people with sort of dog masks on, bondage gear of various sorts. Then we've got lots of men dressed as women, not just dressed as like ordinary women, really sexual sort of outfits. Got some um, some women showing off their bare chests where they've had their uh, breasts removed, showing off the scars. A lot of men being extremely effeminate with makeup on. Uh, and then uh, quite a lot of schoolgirls, not really boys of that sort of age, but lots of girls. I think it just the whole scene appeals to them more uh, in the school. We've got the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. They're the sort of sexual obsessives who dress up as nuns in order to mock the idea of sexual purity uh, and the church. And then in among all this, you've got children being shown around by their misguided parents. So in we went with our placard that said, statistically, children brought up by their natural parents do best. Children brought up by their natural parents do best, which is just a fact. There's a mountain of evidence to confirm that. You can see in the description for this video if you want to follow some of those links. Now, you might think, so going to a Pride event, what's this message got to do with Pride? Will they object to that? Well, they certainly did. They certainly did. Because Pride is all about adults. It's about adult desires. About what children need within the family, that doesn't come into it at all. So we go with our message about what's best for children. And the response from a lot of people at the Pride event was, how dare you? bring up what children need. So what did happen when we got that sign out? So I held the sign. Um, people tried to obscure it with flags. Um, so I had to walk around so that was a bit more difficult for them. Someone tried to trip me up. Uh, someone tried to put a sort of pride flag around my neck. I didn't know what it was. So as far as I could tell, it was just a cord being put around my neck from behind. I got pushed and shoved a bit. A couple of people tried to grab the sign. Uh, it's sort of constant swearing and abuse. Just the sort of thing you, you'd expect. We've had typical sort of responses at other similar events. Some people tried to engage in discussion with various degrees of civility and mainly incivility. I mean, one sample conversation, someone said, you know, how do you know? I said, well, there's lots of research about it. OK, name me one. Name me one piece of research. So I said, well, there's the big study by Paul, Suin, Paul Sullins. Who's he? Well, he's the person who did a big piece of research. All oh, right, okay. Right, do you know how much harm you're doing by holding that sign? Well, we just want what's best for children. Oh, oh, oh okay. Well, what about the harm done by religion then? What? Oh, it doesn't make any sense. There are people saying, well, what about single parents? Well, that's a sort of sensible point of their struggling to understand what we're saying. So I'd explain to them, yeah, single parents, very difficult situation, but that's our point. That's a difficult situation. It's not ideal because uh, children ideally have their mum and their dad, uh, their mum and their dad bringing them up. Then people say, are you saying all gay parents are bad? And I'll point at the sign, I'll point at the word statistically. And say, right, do you understand that means? It means in general, children do best for the natural parents. Um, so if they not having the natural parents, that tends to work out uh, less well. A lot of people just struggled to understand that. So look, people very angry, very self-righteous, but level of understanding, pretty minimal. Then we had our old friend, the stripper and drag so-called artist Tom Harlow uh, was there. So he came up with his megaphone, giving a running commentary. Tom Harlow, you remember, does a sort of degenerate, perverted strip show. Um, and so he was obviously selected to do a children's show by Sterling Council I think late last year. It got cancelled, partly because of our action against it, our protest against it, I think. And so he followed me around with his usual sort of playground abuse. He comes out with things like, this man thinks abortion's wrong. As though he thinks that will really shame me, that will really embarrass me, the fact that I think that abortion's wrong. I mean, what a crazy upside down world we live in, where you can be in a crowd of thousands and the man who does a degenerate, perverted strip show is seen as the representative of the moral standards. And he sees himself as occupying the moral high ground from which he can hurl abuse at me. Uh, it, it's bizarre, it's bizarre. Uh, so we had the police LGBT, whatever they're called, division there, ready to go on the march or with the rainbows painted on their cheeks and their flags, etc. So at one point when I was walking around the placard, I was quite near to them, and people were hurling abuse at me, swearing. So I said to them, is this okay? You know, there's people swearing at me. Basically, it's not. If you're on the street and some people surround you and start swearing at you, then that's not okay. So I said to the, the police standard, you know, are you going to do anything about this? 
And they said, well, basically, what, why, do you, why don't you go home? You know, if you don't want to be here, don't be here. Um, I said, you know, that's outrageous. You're showing your partiality, um, which, well, they were already, weren't they? Then later on, we spoke to the couple of police liaison, liaison officers who were trying to be helpful. They were, they were, you know, basically, they didn't want any trouble breaking out. So obviously, it wasn't going to come from us, but it might have come from the other uh, participants. So I noticed partway through speaking to them, they both got stickers on, so rainbow and so LGBT stickers. So I said to them, should you not be neutral? And, and the lady said, oh, you, you know, we can be neutral, even though we're showing that we accept and respect all people. So I said, you know, the rainbow flag, for example, that stands for, to illustrate my point, like same-sex marriage. I disagree with same-sex marriage. Why do you have to tell me that you, you disagree with them? Why do you have to make it clear to me that you're on the other side of the argument? Here, the police are supposed to be neutral. Oh, oh yeah, I can see your point. I'll, I'll feed that back. But I think in future, if a police officer's got any sort of rainbow gear on, I'm just going to refuse to speak to them, apart from to explain why I'm not speaking to them. Uh, so what was the point of this little activity for us last Saturday? Well, the point is to show that the agenda of pride, LGBT pride, is that it's all about adults and it's nothing about children, apart from luring them into their ideology. It's nothing about the well-being of children and providing children with what they need within the family. Now, in Scotland, who speaks up for children? Who speaks up for children? Saying children need a mum and a dad. That's the ideal family form for them to be in. So we want to maximise the number of children born into that and benefiting from that in the future. Who says that in Scotland? Apart from the Scottish Family Party. The Conservatives... Not a chance. Not a chance. Nothing whatsoever. If you don't care about children, then you don't care about the future of our society. And if you do care, I would ask you to support the Scottish Family Party by some of the links below. If there's a Pride event coming up near you, get in touch with us and maybe we'll come along with this placard or maybe a different placard and continue to make our point, particularly for the sake of children.